Hi, everyone. Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer here. Sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. Lots to cover with my tribe today on Patreon. But uh, I'm here now and ready for the AMA Ask Me Anything. This is every Friday where you can ask me about my Imagineering career, career Ghostbusters, Indian in the Cupboard, Michael Jackson, Elizabeth Taylor, um, Sidney Poitier, Max von Sydow, people that I've met, um, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd and Ghostbusters. I worked with all of them, et cetera, et cetera. So you can ask me about if I know people, you can ask me if I know places, you can talk to me about Disneyland, you can talk to me about the movies I've done. I'm also a, a, a Muppeteer, Jim Henson Muppeteer since 19, what was it, 89? And uh, what else? Just pretty much anything you wanna ask me about about being mixed, you want to ask, you know, if it's inappropriate, I will let you know. But most of the time, I will answer it. My opinion on something that's been a burning question for you, it's really ask me anything. And today I thought I would just say, have you seen that? Did you see that picture in the thumbnail about the Avengers Campus opening? And uh, a couple of my dear friends on the tribe got a sneak screening. They couldn't really, a, a sneak preview. I mean, I'm kind of making it sound like a movie, aren't I? And it's not. But uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. Consider subscribing. Really love to have you if this is something that you enjoy, which is just basically me running through my brain, which can be a little challenging, a little scary. I jump from topics to topics quite a bit. A lot of it about art. You can ask me about art. You can ask me about Star Wars. Star Wars, I, I do know a lot about the actual Star Wars. Um, I'm trying to keep up with the new, all the stuff that's happening on Star Wars, but feel free in the Ask Me Anything to tell me about new stuff because I love to hear about it. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Sculpting, I'm a sculptor. So anything you want to ask me, you can ask me. So uh, this Avengers, Avengers, Avengers Campus, uh, the Avengers Campus sounds really interesting. And with Terry's tribe, and let me just pull up how you can join me if you decide you want to be a member of the tribe. Here's how you can join me. Go to patreon.com slash Terry Harden and join me. It's $5 a month and it you can, you know, donate higher if you, you know, you can contribute. What's the word? Opt in. Yay. Blah, blah, blah. You can opt in at, at a higher per month, but the $5 per month gets you to a Zoom call and a Monday and a Friday early uh, chat with just us. So it's a lot of fun and uh, it's good. And the Zoom call is always fascinating and a big surprise. You, you guys are just always blowing me away and it's just so much fun to be on those Zoom calls and hear all the cool stuff that you have to bring to the table. So if you think your voice would be good added to this, please uh, check it out and be a part of it if you so wish. But we were talking with them and we were talking about a plethora of things. And uh, I was told that the Avengers campus, I was saying that uh, I'm very excited to see the um, Ant-Man and Wasp uh, I guess I, 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 because I've not been there yet, it doesn't open till June 4th. It's everything is oversized. So you feel like a wasp or Ant-Man. And one of the things that is really, uh, getting people curious, excited, uh, whatever you'd say is this giant sandwich. We're not sure if it's a burger or a sandwich, but it is, it is a hundred dollar sandwich. It's a hundred bucks for you to order it. Yeah, it's apparently quite huge and it comes to you and it says it feeds eight people, but uh, it appears that depending on your appetite, it could feed more or even less. And are the Avengers going to have a contest that if you want to eat it for yourself, then you get it for free? I don't know. That's kind of scary because I those kind of contests make me nervous. But I remember the pig trough at Farrell's ice cream parlor. This may be dating me again, but the pig trough, if you could finish it yourself, you got this amazing ribbon and, and you stood up in front of the entire restaurant and everybody applauded you. And it was really wild and wacky and a lot of fun. So 
I don't know if the Avengers and the people on campus will do that, but um, this sandwich is something else. So Google it for your fun and entertainment. <laughs> Should you so be inclined if you want to see what it is. But uh, I don't know. I, I would imagine they're going to offer it on June 4th when it opens. And those of you who are going, feel free to post and let me know if you bought it, if you tried it, or if you just looked at someone else who did it. Because that's a very pricey sandwich. But uh, uh, just that, yeah, wow. I, 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 somebody thought it was a burger. And uh, that means that it has, you know, maybe if you're you're vegan or vegetarian, it, it has a vegetable patty. Or if you're not, it's it's meat. Or maybe it's not that at all. Maybe it's a, a sandwich sandwich. But in any way, in any case, if you have anything to say, feel free to post in the comments, and we'll uh, and we'll take a look at it. But it's exciting. I didn't think I was going to be very excited about Avengers Campus because Avengers Campus is Avengers, and I'm like, eh, when it comes to Avengers. So, but uh, that room looks so cool with the giant sodas and the giant straw. It just, it looked really fun. So I really, really do want to see that. But I don't know what else is there. I haven't really been following it. Yeah, I'll follow it. And I know it's coming up on June 4th. And I know many of you are very excited. So uh, that thing in the thumbnail, that poster, that countdown poster came from a really sweet cast member who always sends me those countdowns that it lets them know, you know, it gets them all revved up, all revved up for when they're going to be launching it. So it's cool. It's exciting. It's kind of neat. And, and Disney's really doing the best they can to get everybody in the, in the uh, zone and excited and, and, and so on and so forth. So cool. Also, Cruella's coming out, guys. Uh, $29.99 on Disney Plus, which I personally won't be paying. But if you decide you do it, please let me know what you think of the movie. I may just pop over to a theater. And uh, since I'm a senior, I'll get it for about 10 bucks. So I save $20 by getting up off my hiney and going to a movie theater and seeing it on the big screen, which I think would be more fun anyway. So uh, that's kind of what's happening today, Friday. Happy Memorial Day. Before I forget, there will be no broadcast Monday, Memorial Day, not because Memorial Day, uh, I'd like to say because I want to celebrate Memorial Day, but genius here, meaning me, uh, scheduled a colonoscopy. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, I scheduled, I, I have this procedure I've got to do and it's Tuesday. So I will be drinking clear liquids all day. Yay. <laughs> and spending time in a room I'd rather not spend my entire day in. But those of you who have been through this procedure know exactly what I'm talking about. Yay. Uh, so, so Monday, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to subject you to all of that, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you some mercy. I'm going to do something nice for you and not subject you to whatever personality is going to creep out because I can't have a hamburger or skirt steak. You know, last Wednesday I was on a call with my friends. You've seen Tim Gillette pop on here every so often and... Uh, and I have to say that uh, uh, he was talking about pulling out his amazing skirt steak re recipe and I was just getting all jealous so I can feel it welling up. So uh, you guys enjoy. I am going to take a moment and thank uh, everyone who has uh, fought in various wars for us to be safe and continue to be a part of the military to keep us safe. All veterans everywhere. I'm going to put a little uh, celebration on, you know, just a, just a send up to them. Bravo. And thank you because uh, you're very courageous, all of you. And to dedicate your life to this just uh, touches my heart. And so I'll do something like that. But uh, for the most part, uh, I'm not going to be doing much of anything Monday. But I will post a little thumbnail up here to say not a happening. And, um, and yeah, so uh, when you see it and it says uh, catch you Friday, that's what's going to happen. I'll catch you on the next. We're going to leapfrog to AMA to AMA to AMA. So, and also, it's 
the Memorial Day weekend. So this is probably going to be a bit short today because you all have stuff to do. I think they said something like one in every five people is doing some sort of vacation in California. LAX is just jammed. I don't know if you've seen it, but you, you, you'll, 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 it's scary. It's scarier than before the pandemic. And it's going to be worse today. So if you're flying, please leave early. In fact, you probably, for any flight today, should have left last night. If you're flying out of LAX. Uh, sorry, but that's kind of the way it is. And um, and 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 if you're driving, they say 60% as uh, with the automobile club, AAA, who, you know, has their finger on the pulse of travel uh, driving travel, but they also do the other kind of travel. They said that, uh, 60% are going to be in their cars and driving around for Memorial day. So, so be extra careful, be extra safe. Remember to continue to social distance and wear your mask wherever necessary and, uh, have a good time, have a good time, but I'm not going to keep you today too long because I know that you've got places to go and people to see. And so we'll hang out for a little bit here and then um, I will say, off you go, have fun, off you go, <laughs> enjoy. Yup, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, and before I go to your comments, there has been several questions about this storyboard behind me. So I have set up, you may see this special camera right here. I've set it up so that I can point it towards that, which is my storyboard. I'm gonna just zoom in on it. I'm gonna frame it up here for you. And then I'm gonna zoom in on it. Now this camera is not the best zoomer for clarity, but uh, it'll at least give you an idea of what this is. So. Uh, you, several of you have asked this question a couple of times and you may have thought, Hey, Terry's been ignoring me. It's not that I've been ignoring you. I had to get this special camera up and running. So I did this little silent movie. I just got real excited about doing a silent film and I will be posting it on you on my YouTube channel soon. I just need to do it. Today, this month was a little crazy because of uh, hitchhiking ghost deliveries. And those of you who have ordered a set, thank you for your patience and kindness as I work to fulfill those the best I can. Uh, and I sent a special email out to you and I promised to give you, keep you posted and a post keeping you posted could mean a phone call and leaving you a voice message because we're buds. Okay. But the email helped because I was in the process of packing the one month late five sets of ghosts. Only five can be produced per month. They're that involved for the pandemic. And uh, these five were a month late. Well, you'll be happy to know that if you are on that list, if you were supposed to get your ghosts in April, they are coming to you May. And uh, we have spoken. I've sent you the the tracking numbers, or some a couple of you are are having them picked up. So, so uh, that's been overdoing it. So that's why I haven't gotten to this. But if we cut to this now for you, just for you and my eye. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to write some sort of script. I decided a, a silent movie, and uh, this is a storyboard. So I did these sketches all myself. And as we uh, careen down, you can see, and I will zoom in in a minute, but you can see it says the opening, which is scene one, and then the hostel, which I had to create. I had to create a set for the hostel because the youth hostel was in Paris, um, was in actually Ravenna, Italy, not Paris. This is the, the, the uh, bedroom, ballroom, etc. Okay. So if we zoom in um, on this, I'm going to just kind of angle this here and zoom in a bit more just so you can kind of see, like I said, they might be a little fuzzy, but you can see that my storyboards are really just kind of rough. 
if we go here, you can see that they're just kind of quick, rough camera angles. That one means it's a three shot. And if we come down, you've got more people here, right? You can see over on one side, you open the door and there's a lot of the beds that were in the hostel. And if we come down, uh, this is me struggling with the mosquito. And uh, I want to have a dissolve there. And then if we come down here, if I decide to cut a scene, I just did it like that and made a big X. And then here are uh, shots of my friends as they, as the people react. Okay. This one is the lady when she sees the ghost. This one right here. Let me just tilt and center it up. She sees a ghost and I scare her. So she runs. And uh, then the next one is uh, is me coming back. And yeah, so there you go. So there you go. There's the storyboard that you all were so curious about that's over my shoulder. And, um, and I thought you would enjoy seeing it. So uh, that's why I got up early and set this camera up so that you could uh, be able to observe some things. Usually this camera is attached to my iPad so that I can bring you certain shots from movies and things that I've done. And I'm just resetting it here. So it has something interesting to look at. Should I hit a button accidentally or whatever? So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at your comments. I noticed that there's a few comments here today, and I thought I'm looking here at the StreamYard feed, and we thought we had uh, you. If you have looked, well, you didn't get to see this, but I did some testing on my Patreon page, and um, and we moved a few things around because my my we cannot hardwire out in my shop yet, but. It's getting better. Uh, AT&T recently announced that they have uh, fiber optics that they're going to be uh, putting together. And that means that we may possibly have the opportunity of hardwiring this feed instead of relying on Wi-Fi. Cross your fingers and toes and pray. Oh, and then the feed will be better. But right now it really is reliant on Wi-Fi. So if I glitch in and out, I apologize. But we moved the, the little tower closer to uh, uh, the source. And we thought we had it solid and it looks a little more solid now than before. But uh, if it, if it's glitching on you, I apologize ahead of time. Okay. All right. Cause you know, it's an amazing tourism. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to look at your comments, answer any questions you have and then sign off a little early, perhaps today. So uh, I'm glad to have you here. And uh, I'm so glad you decided to take a couple of minutes and say hi to me before you go off on your amazingly fun-filled vacation. I just uh, can't get over how many people are going on vacation. And one of the things that the news said to remember to do is that many places do, especially campsites and stuff like that, require a reservation. So don't forget. That's when you really see that it is the pandemic because uh, these reservations are required everywhere. And I think people who have gone to Disneyland are saying one of the frustrating things, if there's a frustrating thing, happy to be at the park, happy to see how sparkly it is. The park is really shiny and looks beautiful. They really did some nice work. But when you have to order food, it all has to be on that app. And if you can't get a, a good signal, it takes a while to order the food. So uh, my dear friend Robert Anderson of the tribe suggests that you stop Wi-Fi and go with your cellular. So if you have, find you have a strong cellular signal, use your cellular to activate the Disneyland app. And you can get there a lot further and a lot faster. 
So there's a little tip from dear Robert. He's absolutely correct. I found that made my stress a lot easier. Also understand that there are so many people that want to get food at certain times. You know, you're kind of conditioned to get food like at noon. Try to go at 11 or 1 so you're not in the you know, foray, because what happens is as people line up outside, the lines kind of blend together and social distancing becomes a little like watercolors. They kind of mush together. So save yourself. <laughs> um, do it on an off hour. Yeah. Or you can do like a couple of my friends did, which was pack just one small bag and it has like a couple sandwiches or snacks or something to hold you over until you can do one of those uh, later times. So, you know, or if you're a park hopper, make a reservation at Carthay Circle or at the Lamplight Lounge. I said it right. I love the Lamplight Lounge. I had not been there and some friends took me for a touch of Disney and we ate there. And that is one of the most magnificent restaurants so, uh, you know, if you're going to be over in California Adventure and you want to order some good Disneyland grub, I would say that's Disneyland. Oh, it's so good. And if you're joining me from Walt Disney World or Florida, do me a favor and go to Yak and Yeti and have some fresh food for me because that's my favorite one in Animal Kingdom, Yak and Yeti. In fact, I will go to Animal Kingdom just to go to Yak and Yeti. And uh, I love that restaurant. So that's another one. Um, super fresh ingredients and lovely cocktails. And uh, oh, that's just a great, it's a good restaurant. And they have delicious fish. And fish is my favorite food, my absolute favorite food. Okay, so let's see what you got here. Just a few questions today. Good morning. Update on the Matterhorn at Disneyland. It's still closed. And after some deep inspection, the infrastructure is so bad that part of the outside was coming down. Hence the fence around it. Michael, thank you for that. Poor, poor, poor Matterhorn. But I guess Imagineers can look at this as an opportunity, can't they? To maybe, you know, spiff it up a bit. And uh, that could be fun, you know. I'm sorry we can't ride it, but there are a couple of things they got to figure out with that ride, don't they? <laughs> Bob sleds and such. Of the, yeah. So they've got a little time, don't they? And that that could be very, very that could be very, very fun and exciting to do. So uh, uh, thank you for that update, Michael. Because I know a lot of people were curious about the Matterhorn. Was it going to open and, and everything? Um, Last time they they redid the Manor Horn that I can remember. Let me just put that caveat that I can remember. Um, they did it so it had that sort of ice tunnel feel. Do you remember they sort of sculpted around certain areas so you felt like you were going through these ice tunnels and then you found the abominable Snow Yeti uh, in a certain section. When they first did that, they sent a stuffed animal that was the same height as a six-foot guy and they ran the bobsleds through and it kept coming with the head ripped off. True story. Yeah. While well, they were testing it, they said, we got one small problem and the head. So somewhere in the attraction, said the ride operator, cast member, uh, there's a low hanging thing we got to fix before we can open it to the public. So these are the kind of things you just got to, you're doing your sculpting, you're doing your designing, you're crunching your numbers for these rides as an Imagineer. But in the end, it's all about a test. Okay. It's all about a test. One of my favorite tests, and thank you, Mar Michael, for that update. One of my favorite tests was the Splash Mountain test back in 1987 when I was first introduced to Imagineering. That's when I got hired. Uh, November, December of 1987 was my first time I put on the Imagineer hat. And uh, when I was in there, there was a big story about Frank Wells and Michael Eisner and several other dignitaries as they went down to Disneyland to do the first test ride uh, on Splash Mountain. Uh, one of the problems was that the 
coaster design was designed separately, which is always done. Don't get me wrong. And then they built the inner show around it. Well, there was one small problem when they tested the uh, splash boats and everything. They had, they had, when they finally built it for Disneyland, they had put this like cement tube at a certain point near the base of the drop. And the problem with that is that when it was ridden, and unfortunately by major people, Michael Eisner, Frank Wells, and so on and so forth. And you remember Frank Wells had those really, like those little glasses that he wore? Uh, Google him if you don't know who I'm talking about. But anyway, they got in and what happened is, is cast members put them all in the yellow slickers with the hood and everything so that they could keep their suits nice and dry loaded everybody up in the very first uh, splash ride vehicle and off they went. And uh, the problem was as they hit that main drop, gallons and gallons and gallons of water ran up that tube, nowhere to go and hit like the hammer of God and just dirt bag them. And as they came to the end to disembark, Frank Wells glasses were like this. True story. Both soaked, like all looked like poor little wet dogs. And his glasses were like this. And he was like, um, you know, they, that's when they kind of hand you a towel. <laughs> if you have tried that Jurassic Park ride at Universal before the pandemic, I went to a special thing of that. That's another one where the water just comes... <clears throat> I needed like three towels to dry myself off after I first did that ride. So it's that kind of a thing where you're just, water just gets you and it got them. And so back, the Imagineers went back to the drawing board and uh, had to fix that so that all of you people weren't getting drowned, you know, or pummeled. There was also easily six inches of water in the bottom of the boat after that. So they also had their feet in six inches of water. So there were several things that, needed to be adjusted for the splash the splash attraction. So you've got to go through some testing with, a, I mean, every theme park and amusement park does testing because it's, it's so, so vitally important um, to do that. So uh, if you're interested in other rides that have been tested and have some interesting results, um, feel free to ask me. I'm more than happy to chat about it with you. <laughs> Good morning from the Magic Kingdom. Hello, Jessica. Good to see you. Michael says, pig trough, the zoo for families. Five extra minutes to run it around the room first. Yeah, well, I love to collect those little, you remember those little clear giraffes and monkeys and and uh, uh, what did they have? They had giraffes, monkeys, tigers. I don't think they had a lion, but the zoo had all the zoo animals in it. And then they had it like a, firemen's carry two guys and they they rang this bell didn't they Mike ding 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 and ran the zoo all around it was so fun I it had all kinds of different ice creams in it so I never found the zoo that tasty but it certainly was a great show and I really 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 enjoyed it because it was a, a super super great it was a great show it was a great show my favorite thing um at Ferals, as I can remember, besides getting the wrong rock candy on the way out. And cinnamon flavor, because I love cinnamon. Oh, you know, hot tamales. Yeah, man, hello. But anyway, <laughs> make your teeth red. <laughs> and your tongue too, right? Okay, I'm digressing again. But um, my favorite thing was, um, it was, I can't remember the name of it either, but it was like a creamy white center and then it had chocolate cake on top and chocolate cake, like, and it had a creamy cream in the middle and it had two of them. And then it had lots of whipped cream and a ton of nuts. I love nuts of all kinds, which is another problem with this procedure I'm doing. I cannot have any nuts. I have to, I have, I have notes to myself everywhere. Do not eat nuts. Cause I love eating pecans, almonds, uh, almonds, love almonds, especially raw and, uh, sunflower seeds and, and cashews. I'm just a nut freak. So I have to be off nuts for a week. And so I've put 
reminders because I kind of absentmindedly eat them because I like them. They're a nice source of protein. So that's why I like this particular thing. I forget it was called a black and white or uh, something. I don't even remember, but it was so good. And it was, they covered it in nuts and it was just, but yeah, I miss Farrell's. The ice cream wasn't top of the line, but it was sure a fun place to go eat. It just was neat. Wasn't it, Mike? Yeah, I love that. See, we're, we're going back, back in time. Uh, Bob says Avengers Campus also had a gigantic pretzel that is served on a in on a giant chrome rack. So how big is this pretzel, Bob? Can each one of you put your face in a loop and take a picture? So, you know, you kind of hold it low and two people crouch like you would have you and Rose at the bottom, maybe your daughter at the top and the pretzel surrounds you. Is it that big or, um, or is it is it smaller? That's a lot of pretzel. That's a lot of pretzel, baby. I just wondered if you could make it like a picture frame for each of you. That would be really cool to take a selfie like that or have someone take your picture, of course, with a big giant pretzel. And what kind of paper? You know, you have that big paper. You know how it comes in the paper? And then what does the mustard, mustard dish look like? Is it like a, 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 a bowl? Is it like your popcorn bowl is the mustard dish when you're, you're dipping the pretzel? <laughs> the whole experience sounds totally fun to me. You know, I mean... You know, you and about 10 of your friends could have like giant, is it like giant pretzel? Oh, it would be so fun. Oh, see, I'm getting excited. I'm excited about this wacky big stuff. One of my favorite shows as a kid was um, was uh, Land of the Giants because people would walk by giant telephones. And in fact, Universal, Universal used to, on the tour, have a place where you could walk and actually be among these giant things. And I, as a kid, just went crazy for that. I just loved feeling that like a little person in land of the job. It was just, so this, this, uh, this very adorable, sweet, cute, darling, <laughs> uh, wasp and, Aunt, you know, ant man and wasp. It just, to me, it's just, I, that's the one reason I want to go is because I want to, it's kind of reminiscent of, of land of the giants. So, uh, again, I'm dating myself, you know, you know, subscribe if you like to watch me date, date my, my childhood often. <laughs> I can do it again. How about Mr. Ed, the talking horse? Amazing Mr. Ed. A horse is a horse. Of course, of course. <laughs> I loved anything with horses. So of course the talking horse was exactly what I would love to have uh, next to a talking dragon. So there I go again. Tim Gillette, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Remember what Memorial Day is all about. Yes, your skirt steak. No, wait, that's not what you meant, was it, Tim? Um, absolutely, we got to remember what it's all about. And right now, it's so important to do that. Uh, I remember uh, that uh, I was married. Well, I should start that over. I remember speaking with a woman who is a helicopter pilot that just it was so exciting to me to think of her journey as a helicopter pilot or anyone's journey as a helicopter pilot, actually, or a pilot, or that's why I'm fascinated with pilots and planes and, and, uh, anyone, Bonnie, who would skydive, uh, out of a plane intentionally. <laughs> I'm just impressed. Uh, my dad fought in the Korean war. So the first thing I will do is call and thank you and celebrate him and thank him for his service. But there's so many of you out there that uh, I want to say thank you for what you do because uh, uh, it keeps it keeps all of us safe that that don't do what you do. And I, I love you for it. And, and uh, there's so much that goes into it besides just putting on a uniform, isn't there? So uh, in my, the since I'm not going to be here on Memorial Day, from the bottom of my heart, I want to, I just want to honor you right now. And thank you for that. There you are, Angie. I was almost getting worried that I might not see you today. I thought maybe Angie Floyd was off and running to her favorite vacation, whatever that is, because I know you're one of those people that works so, so hard, Angie. So uh, I'm so glad to see you there. Oh, you went and picked up groceries. <laughs> That's important. And it's probably important to do that early, huh? 
because there's a lot of people who are hitting the road. So they're going to be filling those coolers with all their favorite uh, foods for the good Memorial Day weekend. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining me, my dear. Uh, yes, and happy birthday to MJ. You know, the thing is, though, about MJ, I hope he's going to do something fun for his birthday. Annie Lewin, if you're listening, get this guy a good birthday because he's been working so hard. He does, uh, he is a, a accountant, so he might be a, anyway, he works with numbers. He's a maestro with numbers and tax season is just finished. So he could be doing the Rip Van Winkle sleep or he may be working on people's extensions. But in any case, he's had a very, very busy few months and uh, he deserves a break today. So get up and get away. And then I guess they say to McDonald's, but I'm not going to make you do that. <laughs> but happy birthday, Michael. I'd love to say happy birthday to you in person, but oh well. Debbie Smith, how the heck are you, my darling? Good morning. You had back surgery and starting to get around, getting back into life and missing you. I'm missing you too, my love. Uh, I'm excited. How is it? Is your back feeling better? It sounds like it is. It sounds like it's it's a it's a new leaf for you, right? I'm gonna applaud that. Yay! It's good to have you. Congratulations on a better back. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Bob Bradine says about eighteen inches to two feet. Okay, so that's big though. Maybe like that, two feet. Wow. I can't wait to see it. I cannot wait to see it. And I can't wait to see it on the giant rack. Wouldn't it be nice to be a cast member in that in that section with everything giant? Like there's two of you carrying everything. And what's it take to make it? You know, like, do you hang it from the ceiling and two of you turn it? Or do you do like a maple thing and, and dance around to make this pretzel? And then what about the big twist? You know, <laughs> I just think that'd be the funnest job of all. You can make a production of it. People could watch you make the giant pretzels. Like, you know, you 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 kind of feel like an Oompa Loompa, wouldn't you? Making the pretzel. <laughs> uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, Segway. But wouldn't you feel like an Oompa Loompa doing that? Dancing around? Making the pretzel? I think that could be very, very fun. Bob says, soda cans are as tall as me. Universal Studio Prop Plaza. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like I said, it would be really, it's going to be fun. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Oh, as I sip my cup of tea there and toast Bob Berdeen and the giant soda cans that are as tall as him. Uh, old shows like My Favorite Martian. Yes, Mike. I love that. Do you remember when the Martian cried because one time his antenna got bent and he couldn't put it back. Like it wouldn't go back in his head. It was. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> Oh, it was such a great show. I should watch that again. You know, Roku channel has Roku TV and they have a lot of these classic shows like the first season of Bewitched and stuff. I dream of genies on there. I think my favorite Martians on there. And uh, uh, that 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 could be that could be a lot of fun is to is to uh, uh, watch those characters that you saw as a kid. I also loved Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly. Yeah, so you know we could do this all day, Mike. <laughs> we could just talk about TV shows that you remember as a kid that still hold up, and surprisingly. Uh, uh, Bewitched does it is adorable and you spend a lot of time if you're watching it with someone who was an older adult as opposed to a kid when they watched it they will spend time pointing out furniture that they owned that they see in these shows which is absolutely a lot I had that chair oh and that's my stove you know you know what was cool about this stove is it 
and they'll tell you all about it. It's, it's just adorable and cute, you know? Uh, Angie says she wishes she was on vacation. Month end is very busy for me. Oh, oh, but you get Memorial Day off, don't you? I mean, that's kind of a crime if you don't. Because as Tim Gillette said, you know, we got to remember what that day is for. And uh, be great to just give you guys a day to rest, an extra day to kind of just sit back and give thanks, right? And be grateful for what blessings you have in life, like a, a group of people who are willing to fight for our freedom every single day. And um, yeah, so I hope you get that day off, Angie, because it's just not fair if you don't. Are you enjoying the dinosaur stories coming in, coming in for the, yes. And Angie, thank you for reminding me. I am going to announce that in June. I think I mentioned that, but if I didn't, I apologize. Yeah, I'm going to announce it in June. You still have time to get your stories in if you want some dinosaur bling. Uh, I'm pulling out more dinosaur bling. Um, but this time, if I think I've got maybe half a dozen stories, and that means y'all are going to win. Uh, but if more people want, then uh, please submit it. Just send it to my email, terry at terryharden.com, and uh, we'll do that. You know, I'm very excited about the stories. I've also been invited to be uh, in a book that that handles Disney recipes, and they've asked me for my favorite recipe. I don't have a favorite recipe per se, but I'm writing one that's really dear to me, and uh, I got to get that to her. So there's a lot of fun little uh, things that are happening creatively that you see and go, wow, you know, um, uh, you know, this is a great time to chat about some of those those, those fun things and the dinosaur stories are, you know, you talk about it, it's touching because many people like baby Sinclair from dinosaurs. Many people uh, just like the fact that it was part of TGIF. Thank God it's Friday on ABC uh, television network. And you know, ABC is affiliated with Disney. So uh, it, it was a fun thing to do. And they, they had this lineup of really fun shows. It kind of reminds me of, uh, my friend Deanna, she, I think Deanna says she watches Wednesday. It might not have been Deanna though. It might've been another friend of mine who watches Wednesday where it's like doctor shows. So it's like what Chicago hope and, and Amsterdam something, I don't know, but it's all like, like Chicago fire. And then maybe it's just a day at night in Chicago or something. You can see, I don't watch TV. You know, can you see that? I have to say, tell you that the one thing I really jump in seeing now that's, you know, long gone and, and is uh two and a half men with Charlie Sheen. I mean, I know that people are telling me he's, he's nutty, but boy, is he good in that show? Every single one of those actors are really, really good. And I never really watch sitcoms. So I'm kind of, I catch that one uh, just for a half hour whenever I can on uh, on a local TV station we have here and I'm grateful for it. It's a, it's just a fun, crazy show. And the actors are really amazing. And it's fun to watch how well they mix together and, and do that tay to tay. So, uh, so I watch that whenever possible, but I don't watch a lot of television because I'm working. It may be in the background, but usually it's a movie. So I can pretty much, um, Quote the Gladiator, First Blood, uh, any Clint Eastwood movie by heart. I can almost say every line because it's in the background. Uh, Zato Ich, The Blind Swordsman, um, Lone Wolf and Cub, another one I love. Jackie Chan films, animated films. I'll watch those. But they'll all be in the background like radio. I like it better than music. Because music I dance to, and um, when you're trying to work and you're dancing, <laughs> it doesn't work. So a movie in the background, and what's interesting is when the, the sculpture finally comes out to give to you, my head flashes back on the movie that was in the background, or I also like Doc Martin. So I'll remember the episode when I was sculpting certain portions of a sculpture or doing certain drawings and sketches. I know, a little weird, but movies, that, that really works. Um, and speaking of films, if you haven't seen all of me with Steve Martin, you really need to Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin, Lily Tomlin went through a dry spell, uh, along with, uh, John Travolta. They did a movie together that was really not good. 
And uh, it, it sort of made their career, it, see, it kind of nailed their career for a while. They didn't get hired in films, and so they went off and did other things. I think Lily Tomlin did theater, which was really brilliant. And I can't remember what John Travolta did, but they, they laid low for a while. And then they came back with a vengeance, both of them, super wonderful and talented. But one of the movies that Lily Tomlin did that I absolutely, Tomlin did, that I absolutely love her in is All of Me with Steve Martin. And if you haven't seen it, you could probably get it for five, 10 bucks, less than 10 bucks at a Walmart. Okay. Cause it's an older movie, but it's so much fun. It's just a fun little film and they both do a fantastic job. And Steve Martin is one of those people that I love as far as the uh, physical Things, you know, the physical funny, he's very good at physical funny. So um, he he doesn't, he does not, uh, he delivers a lot in this movie. So it's one of my favorite as well. And, um, you know, so you think about these movies that are real special to you and uh, uh, you go, wow, yes. Uh, so go back in time and watch something you haven't watched in a while. And it'll bring that joy right back up. Toy Story, I hadn't seen it in a long, long time. And I watched it last weekend after the chalk walk and thought it was a lot of a lot of fun, the walk I did for Children's Hospital. So yeah, I I, you know, you just pull out those. Uh we also watched uh, Alice in Wonderland, which my husband said he didn't he wondered if it did well. You know, Disney's Alice in Wonderland. He said it didn't really look like that good of a movie. But I know a lot of you are Alice in Wonderland fans. So I was like, I think it was. I think it did did well. But it is a different pace than the other movies. It's an older film and it has a different pace. But uh, I enjoyed it. I love the bread and butterflies and um, the pencil birds and things like that. You know, little things that I had forgotten. You know, the thing that really, when you think of Alice in Wonderland, you remember the caterpillar on the mushroom, the the Mad Hatter, Marsh Hare, and the, the rabbit. And you also remember the Queen of Hearts and painting the roses red. But I think the other more, like I had forgotten the flower sequence where all the flowers sing and react. You've got dogwood and and cattle lilies, I think. I don't, but it's if you haven't seen it, it's really, it's, I thought it was fun, but my husband kind of felt it was kind of bland. But I, I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was fun. You know, I mean, these are earlier Disney films, so their energy is going to be different from the later ones. But it's fun to go back and check that out. Yeah. So and define back. OK, I was born in 1957. So back is a way back. <laughs> I mean, our TVs were still black and white. I mean, really, really. So back for you might be to look at a film like Indiana Jones. Uh, that might have been a first film for you, Indiana Jones as a young person. Star Wars might be a first film for you. In 1977, I was uh, 17, 18 years old. So it was a big thing for me to go see Star Wars in 1977, uh, which uh, the real anniversary was May 25th, by the way. Not May the 4th, but I digress. Oh, they just don't make TV shows like they used to. Well, they don't. But then again, sometimes that's a good thing. With the exception of the Dick Van Dyke show, that's a brilliant show. Love that show. Oh, Rob. <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore. She just said, oh, Rob. Uh, I love it. I love it. It had some, some great, great people in it. Uh, but you're right, Angie. It's it's a different thing now. It It, it will not... The, the sitcoms of yesteryear don't necessarily mean they will work as well for today, with the exception of the genius, if you have Disney+, Plus, I've said this before, of WandaVision. WandaVision will just blow you away. WandaVision is so good. And what they did was they chatted with Dick Van Dyke to talk about the Dick Van Dyke show so that they could duplicate. They even duplicated the audiences that he talked about they had during that time. So it's really, go see that show if you haven't seen it. And if you have seen it, be sure to watch the segment on Disney Plus that talks about the behind the scenes of how they made it. Because it really is a lot of people getting together, believing in a project and really making it work. WandaVision is a, is, a, is a big one with me. And it's unusual because, like I said, I'm not a Marvelite. So uh, that being said, Mo Modal, have you heard of this on Netflix? This 
this superhero that I had no idea that kind of, you know, Adam on, uh, my dear friend Adam, who is is really in the know about about comics and superheroes? He he's a walking encyclopedia. He was telling me about this 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 character. I think it's Modal. I think it is. He'll he'll you guys will correct me. Modor Modor M O D O R. I think anyway. Uh, you'll know what it is. And he is. is it, but but what fascinates me? It's on Netflix. And I couldn't believe it was a Marvel character. I had never heard about him. I did. I had no idea. But uh, Adam said that he would. He loved the show, and that, that this is one of a character he really admires. And uh, they, they they give it a twist. But what really makes it cool is it's stop motion animation at its best. So if you're someone who likes Nightmare Before Christmas, well, this one's a little more. I mean, it is a Marvel comic, so it's got a little more violence, and it's really twisted and weird. But uh, the animation is really neat. So if you can stomach it, I mean, it's got some it's really twisted so <laughs> seriously a twisted show but i was fascinated by the stop motion animation so i just dazzled by the detail of this that they did and you know stop motion is frame by frame guys so they're they're going in and changing the mouths and this is work like nightmare before christmas you remember you those of you who love that that's the same thing they're moving things you know little bit little bit little bit little bit so to watch a whole series do this is was is is fascinating but if it's too violent for you go watch nightmare before christmas you'll get the same fascination and you won't have to go through all of that weirdness but that show is weird oh good yay awesome angie i'm glad to hear you have it off i think everybody should so i'm glad you have it off as well and yes, I, I'm right with you, celebrating those who have served. Leo says, one of the funniest films I've ever seen. Great, great performances by both Martin and Tomlin. Yeah, she, really? At that age, I wasn't, Lily Tomlin I'm talking about now, at that age in her film life, she was hit and miss, especially for me. I, I wasn't a super fan, but when I saw this movie, I fell in love with her, which shows you to always be curious and keep an open mind because sometimes an actor may not appeal to you at certain times and at other times they will because they get a, 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 a role that really they really connect to and define with. And she was so vulnerable, sweet and kind. Uh, she's cute in this. She's cute in this movie. And I have to agree with Leo. She's adorable. So if you haven't seen all of me and uh, another person who does that is Diane Keaton as a young actress, I did not find her appealing to me whatsoever, but ever since she's uh, she's gotten involved, you know, what she's put some, you know, she's the, her film choices as a mature woman. Oh my gosh. Uh, she's just amazing. And what is it? Something's got to give. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I think that I get them. I get two of them mixed up, and the same with Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson was I was not a fan of when he was younger, but now that he's older and he's making certain choices and he's more funny, I uh, he's just he's just terribly good, really really good. So you just you know I'm I'm trying to be that way with the actor Adam, who plays uh, Kylo Ren because I really don't think he can act at all. And so I keep hoping I see something that will change my mind. I will forever, Adam, keep an open mind on you. So don't be sad that I right now think you can't act. Uh, I'm hoping you get something that you can really seek your teeth into that I haven't seen happen uh, yet. So sorry, but uh, yeah, mm. you can't have everybody love you. <laughs> this I know, so. So thank you, Leo. Yes, I love this movie. I would like them to bring back the after-school specials. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know somewhere you can see. I can't remember exactly where, Angie. You'd have to Google it. Maybe it's YouTube where you can see Multiplication Rock. You remember that? That was always so fun. Multiplication Rocks and um, LeVar Burton's. What's that one he did that was really cool um, that I thought was really fun so yeah after school specials are fun then there was also the 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 movie of the week that was fun what was it mcleod colombo 
and what was the third one guys um that you could watch every day every week it switched to one of those three i always watched when it was colombo because uh i love colombo i have the the let the uh, dvds because i just can watch one right after another one more thing just one more thing um yeah i whatever he says just one more thing you know you're in trouble so <laughs> jenny hello good to see you jenny um I don't know if you heard, but uh, the Hitchhiking Ghosts are a month delayed, which means you got plenty of time because I've, I've kind of put your ghost at the end so we can trade them for uh, our art. We can trade art for art. So you got plenty of time to do that, that portrait. Plenty of time. <laughs> you can go into the fall now uh, uh, because the manufacturer is a little bit delayed. So, um, so don't rush. I know you've been very busy and very popular and I'm like, Cool. I'm excited to see that. So uh, uh, check the uh, the uh, Patreon uh, live broadcast today because I showed my uh, I showed my plug to my my uh, uh, attic that was hand painted by a Disney artist. I've got several of that around here, and I was saying to the tribe how it's great to get an artist to do some artwork for you, and then you got some real beautiful choice pieces around your home. And uh, it's nice. And a lot of times an artist will work something out with you. So as Jannie and I have worked out. So uh, you, all, all you do is ask, okay, is what I said to people. Great to see you, Jenny. Happy Memorial Day. And I'm not here Monday, by the way. I'm not here Monday. So eh, not here Monday. What is the next project you are going to work on? Any chance of sculpting a Br'er Rabbit from Splash Mountain? I do have the pin, Debbie. I did the pin. I'm not sculpting the rabbit yet, but here is a pin that I did. And you can go to my website, terryharden.com, go to the online store. And if this excites you, you can get it. This is the Splash Mountain. Hold on. I have to fix my light from an earlier. There it is. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, so here's the pin, and uh, it's actually dimensional. You see how the rabbit sits on beep, beep. the rabbit sits on top, and uh, it's a limited. It's sandwiched, so it's thick. But there is a little rabbit. I designed this, so if you want, you can have this Splash Mountain pin. And if I flip it over, it's limited to 150. My signature is embossed, and then I handwrite. I sign it underneath in a permanent marker underneath as well. So you get both, but there you go. If you want that Debbie, that's the closest. I'm not necessarily going to do the rabbit anytime soon, but we can put it on the list for a later time. What am I doing? Uh, what is this girl doing? Uh, I am, uh, in conference with Rolly Crump, we're going to continue to discuss this chess set and see what a good launch time is going to be. Um, the ghosts have been rather precarious, so I just kind of waited. But the next thing I want to do is either Figment or the Cheshire Cat. Now, the Cheshire Cat was all lined up to go, but then um, many of you went, nah, Figment, Figment, Figment. And this is because Disney released the fact I don't know if it's in stone or not. You guys over there at the Magic Kingdom can let me know. But uh, they were talking about uh, giving Figment a facelift, doing something different with Figment. And many of you were like, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. Heck no. And I was like, tell me about it. And so I saw some of the concept sculpting of the new Figment. And he looks a little more like Puff the Magic Dragon, doesn't he? So, uh, or, or that show, Kukla, Fran, and Ollie, I don't think he looks so much like uh, Ollie, but wow. I mean, it's, it, my point is it's a big change from, from the figment that all you guys love. So, so people were like, please, could you do a figment? So I'm just trying to find out which one first. My friend, Josie Katz, who's been very patient waiting for, the Cheshire Cat really wants the Cheshire Cat to uh, 
be the next one. But if you have an opinion, guys, please post it in the comments and let me know. Or if you don't want to go public, uh, feel free to message, message me on Messenger or uh, email me at uh, terryharden.com, terry at terryharden.com. Um, but if you forget all of this, just Google me, okay? Because it, I pop up and you can write to me and uh, you can tell me your opinion. Or if you have a suggestion, just as Debbie did about the rabbit from the splash boat, uh, you're more than welcome to, to make that suggestion. Because if you make that suggestion and I do it, you get the right to purchase number one. Number one in my series is always so popular that I give the right to purchase it to the person who came up with the idea. So, um, so right now and, and, and figment and or Cheshire will happen in the fall. I'll probably start sculpting that character around. I'm thinking September for pray, 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 uh, Christmas release. So, and he will be like my other characters, my, my, alum, my, uh, 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 impressions characters where they're all about the, you know, they're, they're about this big, like my, um, I don't have him, but this is the box for Groot. So you can see Groot fit in here quite well. If you, if you bought a Groot, I do a custom box. This is all because Groot is all about plants. This box was a recycled box so that, you know, he's he's kind of earth conscious, and, you know, because he is, you know, a plant and can grow into one and stuff. So there's this and it had a, a leaf tie on it and stuff. Um, it had a lot of cool things. And then, of course, baby Groot. So they're, they'll be about this big and uh, and we'll we'll let you know as it comes. In fact, if you want to be a part of its development, you want to chime in. Of course, I'll be reaching out to uh, my patrons for that. But also, I'll show you a couple of things here as well. Okay? Yay! So it could be very exciting. Um, Reading Rainbow. That's it. Reading Rainbow. Did you ever see that, guys? Reading Rainbow. Makes me think of Highlights. You remember that magazine? I always found Highlights in the dentist's office. Highlights magazine. <laughs> I think it's still around, but it, it it's smaller. But it used to be like oversized and big. Um, highlights, yeah. I liked I liked the uh, highlights. I should show you some magazines I really like called Zoo Books. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these, and I don't know if they're still around. But uh, if I remember, I will pull out some of the. I've saved all my Zoo Books because they talk about they take a particular animal, let's say the panda bear. And they break the panda bear down into uh, the panda bear, the history of the panda bear, the skin color of the panda bear. So they do a sketch with or photographs of the panda bear with the fur. And then they show you that his skin tones underneath the fur is a certain situation. Then they break it down into bones and muscle. So if I'm ever sculpting animals, which I do a lot, they're my favorite, I have this book that just kind of I can flip through and get all I need to know about an animal that I want to sculpt, how they work, how they function. I actually really hung on to a zoo books when I did. You may have heard of Eddie Murphy's Dr. Doolittle. Well, for uh, Henson, I built the tiger. Um, Eddie Murphy was terribly afraid of animals. And um, Tippy Hedren had a wonderful cat. I think his name was Jake. That was one of the oldest living big tigers in captivity. And he had lost all of his chompers. He had actually grind them down because he lived a lot longer than most tigers do. And so Tippy, the, the animal trainers for Dr. Doolittle had a roaring tiger, which was younger and had his all, you know, his teeth weren't all worn down. And then the actual tiger that worked with Eddie Murphy was Jake, who had, you know, he didn't have a lot of chompers. Even so, Eddie Murphy was a little nervous about being around these animals. And so when he does the sequence where he has to uh, help the tiger by knocking him out and working on him, well, that tiger is is mine so uh not completely mine i did the understructure and then the fur and fabric was done by another uh uh henson person and stuff but we built the tiger so um 
so I used my point is I used the zoo books to get all the structures right and stuff. So there's these books like and 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 things like Reading Rainbow and these books or uh uh things like that, that I just, um, uh, schoolhouse rocks. That's the other one I was thinking of. These all kind of helped you to do, to, to achieve other things and goals that you wanted to do. So if you remind me, I can show you those books. Um, I have to get up and walk off camera and stuff and dig. So I don't want to have you looking at nothing. Could probably point it somewhere if you really want to see it. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, prayers, uh, Monday procedure goes fast with no findings. Yes. Thank you, Andy, Angie. Monday, it'll be fine. Okay. Tuesday is the actual event because they get Memorial Day off too. But I was so excited to get this thing scheduled. I couldn't believe that June 1st was available. And then hindsight being 2020, I realized why it was. <laughs> Because procedure, the prep day is the day before. And of course, that's Memorial Day. So, <laughs> oh, well, it'll be done. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'll have to celebrate I, I my Memorial Day on Sunday. I'll just have to say, look, Monday's going to be one of those days. I don't know what kind of condition I'm going to be in, you know, because as many people will tell you for a colonoscopy, the, the colonoscopy, the prep is worse than the procedure. Try to say that fast. The prep is more than the procedure. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I like chicken broth, so I'm going to be having a lot of chicken broth. And I think I'm going to treat myself. They said I could have soda. So I don't usually drink soda, but I'm going to go out and get a Dr. Pepper, which is my favorite soda. And uh, I'll have, I'll just give myself a couple of treats before I do it so that it's not painful. But, you know, it's, I'll be good. It'll be fine. I've got, I've got uh, some things I want to do. I got to see, because sometimes you'll get a little bit lightheaded because you're doing this liquid diet. So I have to be careful as to what projects I think I can do, you know, because I, I could be drawing and, you know, <laughs> I could be attempting to draw in, in ink and, and doing my sketching, you know, like this and drawing my little characters and then go, uh, <laughs> so I have to be careful that I keep an eye, uh, an eye on my, on my, you know, on that whole thing. Cause it, it's, it's something, sometimes you just get a little fuzzy. So that's why I'm uh, doing it. But thank you for your prayers, Angie. Very kind of you. It's going to be, it'll be fine. Um, Leo said something. Thank you, Terry. We'll visit your store. Yeah, you take a look at it. I also have other pins there. I have, um, I also, you know, in Lilo and Stitch, besides loving Lilo and Stitch, well, Inside, it, besides loving just about every character in Lilo and Stitch, because I think they're really cute. I think that's one of the cutest movies that they've ever done, uh, is the Grand Councilwoman. And I was speaking to the person that I designed pins for, Joshua Schaefer. And uh, I I happened to mention that I love this Grand Councilwoman. And um, right when I did that, the actress who did the voice, she passed away. And so Joshua and I created a pin to celebrate her because um, she's my favorite character. So I sketched her up. Here she is. I sketched her up and uh, I'll turn the light on. She's three inches tall. She's also limited to 150. So she's there on the site as well. But what I love about this is a lot of times when you see the Grand Councilwoman um, in Lilo and Stitch, he's in Stitch is in shackles. You know, he's in that restraining thing because she's getting ready to take him back to the planet because he's been he's been bad. He stole a ship and all of that. But afterwards, when she finds out the good that Stitch has done and the good that Lilo has done and that Ohana means family, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. She says that the the United Federation of Planets or whatever is going to protect the family. And so I really wanted a pin where they're hugging. Because now they're friends. They're not after each other and everything. And I just love this pin. Um, I think it's one of the few that is really darling. And this is also one of my, you know, one of my 
illustration sketches. And then the color is done by um, Joshua Schaefer because he really knows the restrictions about pins. So as an artist, I don't have to worry about how the pin is made. Joshua takes it over with my drawing and then he makes it work. So I'm really grateful to be collaborating with a pin maker. So you see it's big though. You know, if you put it in my in my hand, you can see it's really big. So it's another cute one, Debbie. Um, not that you need to spend all your dollars at my store, but I just wanted you to know that there's a lot of cute pins there. Um, and if you haven't seen this one, this is the big seller right now. The uh, Hitchhiking Ghosts That Glow in the Dark. So um, there, this is another big pin. So uh, it's really cute this way, but it's also really cute because it, it glows in the dark and it's not limited. So you can take your time in ordering this. I'm just going to keep making it until people stop buying it and people are really loving this pin. I also like the sky blue on the back. They did that. It's clever, like a nice little touch on it. So it's cute. But if you want any of that, you just go to my website and uh, we'll, we'll cover you. We'll get you covered. We'll take care of you. So you're welcome, Debbie. Absolutely. When do you think you'll return to the movie theater? Oh, uh, what time is it? <laughs> not today. No, I'm not going to go to the opening of, 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 of Cruella. I am probably going to go to the movies. And I probably won't go this weekend. I, I've learned a couple of things. While we're in pandemic, don't go on the weekends anywhere. That really completely defeats all of you traveling for the weekend. But um, I've noticed if I travel during the week, people are a little more, uh, a little less, they're a little less crazy. I don't see as many crazy driving. I don't see as much non-social distancing and mask wearing. I mean, I know if you got the vaccine, you can be a little closer, but we still have to wear masks because we can be carriers. And, and you know, and if there's someone who hasn't been vaccinated, Besides urging them to do so, I want to protect them until they are, which means I wear a mask because they're they're very vulnerable. And the vaccine can keep us from getting it badly, but it can't keep us from getting it, and it can't give up keep us from giving it to someone else. Now, someone else. So I stay, I'm pretty isolated still, only go out when absolutely necessary. I'm going to have to do that soon because I haven't put gas in my car in three months. And I, last time I put gas in my car, it was like two fifty, and I hear it's like what ten dollars a gallon now. <laughs> Not that bad, but people are saying, "Whoa, wow, urgh, about the price hike." So, um, I guess I guess I'll see when I see. But uh, but uh, yeah, uh, um, are you looking forward to a Quiet Place Part Two? Yes. But not if I if I have to pay thirty dollars to see it early. I'll just wait. Cruella, I won't be watching that early. But Dune, as soon as it comes out, I'm going because of course I did the original film. So uh, I'm really excited. But on the big screen, one of the things I like about being able to stream seriously is if I don't like it, I can stop it. And this is one of the challenges that I have with some films. Sometimes the film is so exhausting. And the other thing is if it takes too long. So I don't know if you guys have been on Netflix lately, but there's a new film that just dropped in the top 10 called Army of the Army of the Dead. Have you heard of this where they're not there's like zombies and then there's intelligent, quick, fast zombies and humans? Anyway, it is probably about 30 minutes way too long. And one of the things I love about being home is I can fast forward and get to the point. Now, I'm not fast forwarding miles of it, but I am going through a lot of the long blah, blah that I look at and go, why is this blah, blah happening? So, <laughs> you know, so. In a movie theater, I got to really be excited. Like, I'm really excited for Cuella, so I think I'm going to take that senior discount and go see it. It's going to run me about 10 bucks, not 30 and maybe I'll go early to see it, and if my husband's in the mood, maybe he'll go with me, but uh, it won't be this weekend. This is their opening weekend, and I'm looking really forward to hearing how it does, but uh, I will probably go see it on an off day because that's when I love to see it. Nine times out of 10, you see it on an off day, you're by yourself. 
because there's, you know, you go an off day and off hour, you're by yourself. That and early Sunday morning, if I go a lot of times, I don't know if AMC is doing it, but I used to go to like a eight o'clock or an eight thirty showing. Nobody was up on Sunday. So that's the other thing I might do. Nobody was up. You go and you watch the movie and you're there by yourself eating popcorn. You know, that's how we saw uh, Captain Marvel. It was my husband, myself, and one other guy in the theater watching Captain Marvel when we saw it, um, like a private screening. So, you know, it's your timing. You can make that social distancing really work. <laughs> so, yes, Leo, I'm excited to do some movie stuff, but uh, not on weekends. I won't go on a weekend. So it's out for me on a weekend right now. A lot of things are out for me on a weekend. We have a, an amazing restaurant called Porto's. Have you heard of this restaurant, bakery? People just love it, okay? They love things that Porto's makes. But during the week, everybody social distances and wears masks. The weekend, everybody seems to lose their mind and uh, they're on top of each other. So I've learned if I want to eat Porto's food, not that I'm eating there all the time, but if I do want to have it, I have to go eat. I have to grab it during the week. Yeah, it's just you start to learn your environment, don't you? And you you plan. I'm doing a lot of planning. Yeah, planning. <laughs> Have you ever thought of sculpting Disneyland's jingle? I bet it would be popular. Disneyland's jingle. Isn't jingle the carousel horse? Jingles, I think, is how you say it. I did a carousel horse. And when I did it in my six uh, Jewels of the Parks, I purposely did not do jingles. And the reason I purposely, I did my favorite horse, is because a lot of people collected jingles. I have a friend who loves horses, but also loves jingles. And I thought, how many jingles does the woman need? So I thought it would be nice, since she loves carousel horses, to have a different horse. And many people collected that there weren't a lot of those you could only there were only 10 available and she bought the original actually because she does she loves it and it's about yay big super cute and sweet um but yeah jingles um um i could maybe do it again we'll have to see uh the thing is about jingles D leo does jingles have a story or is it a carousel horse because the thing about jingles is it's frozen so this is the pose you always get for jingles because this is where she's frozen you know it's not like the cheshire cat who has all these different uh when i watched alice in wonderland there were so many interesting things that we could do with the cheshire cat that i've not seen so uh i'll be getting with Josie, who loves this character, and seeing if there's something. What I think I'd like to do is, when she feels comfortable, is we sit and watch Alice in Wonderland together, and we freeze frame it so she can talk to me about what she would like to see a pose in her collection. And we'll pick, like, three poses and see what y'all like, too, though you Cheshire Cat fans out there, you know? Yeah, yeah, because... Um, I love Tigger, but one of the things I love about Tigger is his versatility in, in when people are sculpting him. Um, and I did one that I just love. That's a, like a stuffed animal Tigger for Mattel that I just loved. He's like, this big. But I really enjoyed that. So um, he's got all these different poses that he does. And I, I just think that if, you, if you're collecting the Cheshire, that uh, I would be, it would love to do a different pose. So in answer to your jingles, can we do... Can we do the mini, maybe Jingles do it, you know, does Jingles have a story? Could we write a story? Maybe people like that. Maybe Jingles comes with a little storybook. And it, that way in the story, we could animate her a little bit, and make her interesting. Anyway, that's my question. <laughs> have you tried Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar? Such a good soda. Uh, no. What's What's in it to make it sweet? Because if it's aspartame or another chemical, then no, I won't touch it. I, I go with sugar. Yeah, because I don't like putting those other things in my body. Sugar, I know what to expect, right? Sugar, first of all, makes Dr. Pepper terribly sweet. As a kid, I don't know how I ever did it. So it keeps me by drinking small amounts when I just go with the flow with like sugar. Yeah, 
I drink less. And uh, the chemicals are not good for you. So uh, that that is a problem for me is the chemical, you know, like, so if, so tell me about, you know, what's in there. And maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe. Yeah. The only additive I like in my Dr. Pepper is peanuts. Seriously. And this was almost the recipe I sent for the book, but I had given it to, um, to my, my friend, Paul, uh, his, his lovely wife, she asked for certain recipes that meant something to us. And my dad used to take us after a baseball game. We got a Dr. Pepper, a bag of planters peanuts, and you pour the peanuts in there and then you chew your soda. Yummy! <laughs> can't do that this week because I can't have any nuts of any kind, but so good. <laughs> Original Dr. Pepper, 10, 2, and 4. And planters peanuts. Oh man, when me, my sister, and my dad sitting in his car and having that after a softball game where he pitched. Yep. Sometimes it's about a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hitchhiking Ghost Pen is the most amazing pen ever. Love it so much. Thank you. And that is, you know, Angie, you make it such a good point because uh Joshua Schaefer, besides being one of the an amazing author. He's written a great book that's about yay big. <laughs> and uh, uh, it talks about Disneyland and it talks about Disney movie. It's, it's just such a great, it's a good book. I, I got to show you that too, but it's in my house next to my bedside because I'm always referring to it. But he does these great pins. And um, he, he reached out to me and asked me if I do some illustrating for him, if I do some illustrations of pins for him. And we started out with my country bear, which oddly enough, I don't have. I did Big Al in honor of the country bears. And he's on the website too. You can grab him too. And uh, that was a lot of fun to do it. He actually taught me a lot about creating pins. I had done one with uh, Dusty of Mice Chat of the 60th anniversary castle. It turned out gorgeous. But... um Dusty's very busy and to, I just didn't want to lay more on him. And he knows if he asked me to do a pin illustration, I would do it in a New York minute because I love my chap and everybody associated with them, especially Dusty. And, uh, and so I would always do it, but Joshua does pins. That's what Joshua does. That's his thing. He writes and he does pins. And so when he reached out to me, all I have to do is the sketch. And then I, I ask him to do the coloring because I like it to be a collaborative effort. He will come back and discuss with me if certain poses are a little bit not, you know, for a pin, certain poses are, are better. So the cool thing is, is I kind of like the cutout version you saw with those two pins I showed you earlier and the ghosts, they're, they're, they're cut out. But when we did Oswald's, uh, he suggested, this is Oswald the Lucky Rabbit pin, and uh, he suggested, that's Joshua, suggested that we make it in a circle. And I thought that this, I, I never thought to do this, but it's super cute. Look how cute it is. Look how big it is. It really has a comic sweetness to it, and I really like it. This, this is the blue background and that's available to everybody. And then if you're a part of Terry's tribe, I've got the exact same one, but it's got a, a black and white background. So it's got a gray background. So you've got the color version and then you've got the black and white version. It's just darling. It's so cute. Anyway, he came up with the idea of this circle and I think it's great. It just has a really clean look to it. The little ear pops out the top. And uh, it's just precious and it's limited to a hundred, but it's just so cute. It's so, so cute. It's so, so, so cute. And then when I get back into circulation, guys, let me just put my picture here so you can see me talking live. Um, when I get back into circulation, I'm going to carry with me these pens because this one was done for me. I actually sent this to the SpaceX gang and to some astronauts through another friend of mine. And um, it's in celebration of the Dragon Craft. So these I just give out. 
because um, and on the back it, it has in history and it has the first flight and it says it's from me and there's limited to 200. And I get, I sent a lot of these to NASA. I don't even know if NASA got them, but I sent them. And then I did this. This is their, their logo. And I put it on here because after all, when you design a space program just for Terry, because she likes dragons, then uh, you got to celebrate it. So what I'm talking about is if you should see me uh, in person someplace, I'm going to start carrying these in my pockets. And if you say hi, then I will give you one. So if you like space and the space program, like I do, I'm such a space squid that I love it. I've got so many patches and I've got this amazing jacket with patches all over it because I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid and I get motion sick. So my dear friend and shuttle pilot extraordinaire Story Musgrave says I should just go for it because everybody gets motion sick. So I uh, want to talk about a jar in the corner of my house that saves change in the hope of being able to take one of those rocket ships so I can see Earth from space. What are they? $200,000, $150,000, buy a house or take a flight. Uh, but I throw the change in there. <laughs> Who knows? That's going to be a big bowl. <laughs> but one can dream. <laughs> Thank you, Angie, for that compliment. Thank you so much. Late Sunday showings are generally really good for smaller audience sizes. You're right, Leo. You're right. Because people want to get up and go to work the next day. That will not apply because the next day is Memorial Day for this weekend. But usually you are correct. For me, it's early morning is the best one for me. I just, the crack of dawn, I used to do early morning screenings at the movie theater because I have this problem with this, the people and their cell phones and their noise. But the other good thing that's great about movie theaters that the AMC is, is those lounge chairs. And those lounge chairs, if you go into a theater that has a lounge chair and a cup holder and a place to hold your food, uh, it's like being... Uh, isolated. You cannot see the people in front and you cannot see the people in back. So you, the only people you have to worry about, and usually people are really respectful, are the ones to the right or left of you. And during the pandemic, they're further away. So it's almost like being on your own anyway. And another thing I'd like to do very, very soon is that AMC has started to allow you to rent a theater out. So you can rent out an entire theater for you and what is it, 20 people? So let's say that you wanted to rent Cruella, which is a first run movie. If you were going to rent that movie, I think let's say for the sake of argument, like to rent the theater is like $400. Okay. So $40 a person if you do it times 10, but $20 a person if you do it times 20. So if you have enough people that you want to get together and, and do a theater, you could rent the theater 20 bucks a person and you could all see this movie first run and just be your tribe. Be cool. Or you could do an older film. They have older films where the theater is only 99 bucks. And so you and a family of five can really do it for 10 people. What's that? Five bucks a piece. So uh, they really are getting creative with the movie theater experience. And it's very touching that you could rent an entire theater for you and your family or friends and stuff. I think that could be kind of fun too. I would want one of those loungy ones where you can sit in the chairs. Um, I had a friend who did that and the kids said, we can sit anywhere. She had grandkids and the kids just sat wherever they wanted to see the movie. And, and during the movie, they would jump around to different seats to get that experience. What's it like from this angle? What's it like from this angle? So that's kind of cute, right? It's kind of a cute idea. Yeah. Very cute idea. Very, very cute idea. Joseph says, good morning. A little late joining. I plan on seeing Cruella Tuesday in theaters, AMC six. Two, six dollar Tuesdays. See, see, Joseph's on the right page. That's what I'll probably do is see if I can grab a six dollar Tuesday, Joseph. It won't be this Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to wait a little bit because it's going to be a little while. <laughs> but that's a genius idea there, Joseph. A genius idea. Landon, how are you? Do you think they'll put Muppets tonight on Disney Plus? 
they've got other Muppets on there, so why not? Why not? It was good. It was good. Yeah. Not one of the better ones, though, was it? You know, the Muppet show has been great to watch that and and to re-experience what inspired me to meet Jim Henson in the first place has been a joy to watch that. I just have that in the background, you know. Um, it's, it's just all the people that were on it. Oh, man, what a what a great show the original Muppets was. So I'm digressing. The other shows are great. And I've been a part of them, of course, but but I really love the original. I would have loved to have been a part of the original. Yeah, yeah. You can't be everywhere at once, though, can you? But you dream. You can say, if I ever come back, you know, when I see Jim and Evan, I'm going to chat, chat him up on that one. If you have an AMC near you, you can join the Stubbs Club, which I am a member of. It's uh, Stubbs with one B. Uh, <laughs> And you can see movies every Tuesday for $6. That is correct. And that's what I have. I have my stub card. In fact, I'd show it to you, except for my bag is in the place where I'm not. And uh, they charge for the deluxe version. Yeah, they used to have uh, see as many movies as you want for $25. What was it? I think it's 25 bucks a month. No, it was more than that. It was more expensive per month. You had to pay like a major amount of money. And uh, um, I just didn't see it working. Nah, I didn't see it working to do it per month because I don't see movies that often. I, I also have screeners, okay? So, um, and because of the pandemic, the screeners are coming at really strange times. Like you'll get a, a code and they'll say, hey, do you want to see this movie? <laughs> and a code. And we put that code in and we can watch, stream the movie uh, and not pay anything. So that's how I got to see Raya before Raya drops uh, next month and uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. So um, this is the other thing that happens with me being a screen actor and my husband being an art director. Uh, this is this is just something we get to do. But we do go to the theaters because I like that lounge experience. And for $6, you got nothing to lose, as Joyce, Joseph points out then you're going to have a few more people on $6 Tuesdays, but not as many as you would think, especially if you take certain times of the day that aren't popular. Uh, this is why they have a $6 Tuesday, because Tuesdays are not a popular day. It's kind of like the old days when Disneyland used to be a great place to visit on a Thursday. Oh, Thursdays were amazing at Disneyland, but now... All, you know, well, I don't mean now, but I mean when it was before the pandemic, every day was busy because Disney's a rocking place to be. Thank you, Joseph. But yes, Stubbs is a great program. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, Carousel Horse, Static Pose. I'd have to write a story about Jingle so I could give it a different pose. Yeah, because uh, I have a friend who loves Carousel Horses. You know her, Sally Lashoff. She's got a lot of jingles painted. She's got paintings of jingles and sculptures of jingles and various sizes and and uh uh actually i should talk to her and see if she wants me to sculpt the jingles if she said yeah she's been on me though she and her wonderful husband john have been trying to get me to do a miniature version of my dragon in paris so that's been a big one, but uh, not that I'm putting them off. It's just that uh, I got to make sure if I do something like that, it's like these hitchhiking ghosts. The price point is going to be more of an investment. So you have to make sure people really want it to 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 do it, you know, because that's going to be uh, if I do it too small, it's going to get too busy, you know, or maybe, I, you know, I have to think about the design. Maybe we can do that together sometime later. Just purchased your Splash Mountain. Okay, Debbie. So I better get on it. As soon as I get off here, I better get it slipped into an envelope and sent out to you. Yay. Oh, you saw Big Al. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll let Joshua know because we were talking about maybe doing another one. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing is what might be fun is to do like if I do Cheshire Cat as a sculpture is to do Cheshire cat as a pin. What do you think? Same with figment. Um, if I do figment when I do, let me say it that way. Let's be positive. When I do figment as a sculpture, you have a figment as a pin. So I'll have to talk to Joshua about that. We'll, we'll have a little, we'll have a little meeting. 
I think he's going to have a vacation this weekend, though. So uh, much deserved. So many people are going to have a much deserved uh, vacation, aren't they? Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Lead horse, uh, Walt's favorite. Yes, I know. And now tied to Julie Andrews and Mary Poppins. Well, maybe that's what we do. Well, except for if it's Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins and Jingles, I'm game to maybe doing it. Because anything that involves Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins, I'm game. Because that's my Mary. I love Mary Poppins. I love only that Mary Poppins, not the <clears throat> other one. Uh, but I do love the, I do love Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. And have you seen Dick Van Dyke lately, guys? At 95 years old, he looks like his older character from Mary Poppins. It's adorable. Oh, it's so cute. It's just, I love it. We were just getting a kick out of that the other day when we saw that. So thank you. <coughs> Leo is also telling me something else. Oh, my shit, of course. Of course, it's my chat. Why don't you just? Why don't I just go directly to my chat? That site has everything. That site has everything. He's so good. He's such a great guy. I love being a part of that. They're talking to me about writing for them again, and I would like. I think I came up with a suggestion I want to discuss with Dusty and see, and I'll go. I'll continue to. But I'm going to write smaller. I used to write these blogs that were like long, you know, like kind of like me talking, but I'm going to try and get them more uh, smaller. So thank you for that, Leo. It was the AMC A list. I was a member for about a year before the pandemic, $23 a month. Yeah, that's what I thought. And you can see any format like digital or IMAX, see digital too much because I can see makeup lines. So I don't like that. And IMAX, I can't because I get motion sickness. So this 23 a month was really great if you're an IMAX person. Because, right, Joseph, IMAX ran you, what, 15, 20 bucks just to see one movie, didn't it? So that was a big savings if you were an IMAX person. It was like getting, you know, a threefer. Yeah, I can't watch IMAX. My husband just breaks his heart because he loves IMAX. But I have to tell him he, if he wants to see IMAX, he's got to go with someone who can answer because I can't, I can't do IMAX unless it's like uh, the story of beavers. You know, IMAX did this great documentary about beavers and their little habitats and you followed them along and they waddled along. Very, very low key and mundane, but I loved it. Got to see what it was like. But if you're doing flying ships and so, oh, no, 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 no. Can't do it. Just can't do it. Uh, I don't have the cause for that. Mary Poppins, by far my favorite Disney movie ever. Julie Andrews is amazing. Yes, she is. She really is. And I remember just loving, loving the mechanical bird on her finger. You know, practical effects, the computer effects nowadays, you can do just about anything. I'm not saying you can do just about anything well, but you can do just about anything. If you want to make something um, something that's not real, like in this army of the dead, where a lot of the stuff is CG, it becomes very meh, 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 because it's CG. But when you see somebody do something practical, like this bird on her finger, that is just, that stuff is cool. They had to do, they didn't have computers. So they had to figure out how to do the effects that they did. And they're amazing in Mary Poppins. They talk about how they did the carpet bag and she's pulling things like a full, you know, coat rack or lamp or whatever she did. All of that. And they talk about the process because it had to done, be done in practical real time. And so when you watch some of these older films, remember, we didn't have computers back then, or they didn't have computers. Like I had anything to do with the mu movie. Meh. But that's why I love to see older films and what they had to do to get what they needed done. Okay? Yeah. Like the original Invisible Man, Claude Rains. That's original to me. 
Okay. My husband may correct me if there was one before that. But Claude Rains, amazing actor, played the, the black and white Invisible Man. Universal. And what they had to do to do it because there were no computers. Okay. You couldn't just put a guy in green. All right. There was work to be done. You had to figure it out. You had to plan. You had to design. You had to create because you had to work within your parameters. Now, with computers and computer generation, the parameters are kind of loose and free, aren't they? If you want a ship to fly through space that's a spider, you don't have to put it on wires or anything. You can just create it in a computer. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think that's partially a good thing because if you look at Iron Man the movie, and I pointed this out before, you make Iron Man practical so the actors have an actual Iron Man helmet they can hold, right? Gwyneth Paltrow can hold the Iron Man mask and, and really emote about what she's feeling. Or uh, Downey Jr. has where he actually clips physical pieces on his leg. He's not putting green on green, okay? Um, that kind of thing is uh, wonderful. And then you make Iron Man fly and you do with the computers because if you've ever watched black hole and them making it float it's really terrible but it's what they had at the time you know so there's really some great stuff that combines with real practical effects and computer generated i.e the mandalorian and that might be why we love it so much because there are practical things happening that they actually build like for reals and then there's computer stuff and then there's magical things that they've come up with because as technology advances, we get cool stuff. I remember when we watched The Matrix for the first time and you saw Keanu Reeves and they, they kind of, Ooh. and they told, and then things would go fast and they, they showed you this camera system where they had what, 99 cameras that, the, the process that, that stuff was great. That stuff's really cool. So, you know, I like practical, but I think there's a place for everything. I love to see models built. I love to see stop motion puppets created, which is one of the reasons I may love this, this new Twisted show that's on Netflix, by the way, um, because it's still practical. At first, my husband thought it was computer made to look like stop motion animation. But we dug a little deeper into the company and it's actually, they're building all the puppets and they're, they're yeah, it's, it's a brilliant little show. The work that's going to it is amazing. The detail is unbelievable. Its subject matter is really twisted, but uh, the art is great. So color me crazy. I love, I love, I, I can't stop watching it. So uh because I just love the art. I think I could I could watch the characters talk because they do lip replacement and it feels a little Davy and Goliath. Did you ever watch that show? Yeah, so anyway, I love it. But uh, what else we got here? Uh, but you're right, it is amazing. Joseph says, I used to love the making of specials for the original Star Wars trilogy, seeing how they did the special effects. I, pre I appreciated that more than the CG stuff. Well, you know, John Dykstra and the Dykstra Flex camera, which changed the way we watch science fiction forever. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that Dykstra Flex camera is still genius today in my personal opinion. But I also think Dykstra is a rock star. So I got to work for him too, which was really cool. And I actually got to sit and talk to him about stuff. Um, amazing, amazing ge genius. He's a genius. He just was just so, oh, and his team, all of them that did the Dexter Fox camera changed my life and changed many of our lives. And uh, things like the Mandalorian would not be possible without the work that the original group of people did for Star Wars. So, you know, and many things wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for the, the perseverance of George Lucas and his group for getting this 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 movie that everybody said no to on it's cha it's changed so much so uh that's one of the reasons that i love star wars it's iconic and it it you know so so even though i i i know how george feels there were some things that he didn't like because he, he didn't have the technology to do it and he's gone back and he's changed it but i'd really like to urge him if he ever decides to watch my channel and and why would he <laughs> but 
I would love to see him ha do an origin, just, just take the original Star Wars film with all of its problems in his mind and just please give me a DVD of it because I miss it. I miss having the original version. The only original version I think I have is on my laser disc. So I have to make sure I take good care of the new good boy, good boy, take care of my machine so that I can play the original on a laser disc. Otherwise I don't have it. They never did a DVD of it. He, he redid, he remastered the DVDs before he sent it out and I get it. You know, I, I, I know how that is. There are many things that I'd like to go back and change. Uh, th there are some things that I created that, that, you know, it would have been nice if I had had the, the knowledge back then as I do now. But I really do miss the original film that changed my life as a, as a person. And I know there's a lot of people out there that feel the same way I do. And I, I know maybe we're a small group. Maybe there's people out there that just don't care. But I know I do. I really, really love that everything about it was practical. And there were some things that we knew that he did that he played with because he just didn't have the ability to do it, whether it was due to budget or it was due to, um, you know, the ability. You know, I just, yeah, yeah. I know I've said this before, but Star Wars is my baby. Star Wars, Star Wars is the reason that I have the career that I have because George Lucas and Star Wars showed me it was possible. You know, I knew there was something out there. I just didn't know. I was a young girl. I didn't know what what's out there for me. And then I saw Star Wars and I went, bam, room stretched, life changed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, such a great armchair for a nut like me. Captain EO and all that stuff. Just the best armchair. So I am with you, Joseph, 100%. Leo says I rode the $10 month. I rode the $10 month movie for about a year and loved it. I saw more than a hundred films with it replaced by Disney plus and HBO max, which has TCM and tons of great classic films. They do. Here's the thing though. Have you noticed that everyone is taking their own, like making their own little nut? So Amazon is in the process of buying MGM. I don't know how you feel about that. A little engulf and devour. So it's like, but it would open a big thing. Amazon would get a big, you know, um, Amazon get a big chunk of stuff. And then Prime is merging. Who's Prime merging with? I forget. And then Paramount Plus is doing their thing, you know, um, so now you've got this big a la carte thing and you've got to kind of decide what a la carte do you want? Everybody is trying to compete with Netflix because Netflix seems to have a lot of a la carte and I love it. I love looking at Netflix and, and having the a la carte that net Netflix provides. My husband says he doesn't watch Netflix a lot, but I love Netflix. I'm always running into a documentary that I love to watch or some wacko movie that I'm like, oh, what's that? Push the button. Like this Army of the Dead, which just dropped. And I do not like zombie films. Let me just point that out. This one was, like I said, a bit too long. Interesting, mostly CG. So I give it about a five out of 10. But, uh, of, you know, and if you like Guardians of the Galaxy, that big giant guy you know, with all of the tattooed skin. He uh, is an actor in it, and he's very fun to watch. You never tire of watching him. He's a lot of fun. But uh, predictable, dumb moves, dumb situations. And 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 then I watched the ja Jurassic Park uh, animated series. I guess there's three seasons of it. But, oh, my gosh, is that show stupid. So my husband and I were like, yeah, Jurassic Park has really zero security. <laughs> a top scientist girl breaks in with her and she's got her iPhone and he has all of the secrets laid out on his desk on paper and the computer open without a password. I mean, yeah, I mean, no, just really, no. It's, it's you you want to start suspend a belief that you're going to have this dinosaur genetics laboratory where anybody can walk in and get the secrets. Yeah, no. Yeah, stop. Okay, just stop. That one I just, Lindsay goes, this is stupid. And it is, you know, it, oh, it's, just, it's stupid. It's really stupid. 
Uh, but you get to see giant dinosaurs running around. Uh, so if it's your thing, um, great. But yeah. So you got to be careful when you grab certain things because before you know it, you're spending $100 a month watching streaming channels because everybody wants their bite, you know, out of you per month. So you got to kind of, this is what we do. We loved HBO Max and we got rid of it, but we will re-up it uh, when Dune drops. I think what's that, October. So we're not going to sit there and skate through it for months if we're not watching it. So right now we have Netflix, Criterion, and Prime. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and Disney Plus, because I bought that for a year. Was a deal. Right, Leo? Deal, right, Leo? Movie Pass. Yes. Movie Pass is great. Was cool. I remember Movie Pass. You should make a DVD copy of your Laserdisc version, original theatrical version of Star Wars. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting that done. Um, I do, we do not have a machine that goes from one to one. And my husband said, you know, it would take something, but he could do it. So yeah, that's absolutely true. I should. So everyone, we are at almost the two hour mark, one hour, 50 minutes. And I hope you've had a good time. Thank you for hanging with me and staying with me on this, the very beginning launch of your Memorial Day weekend. If you are doing something fun or traveling, please share it. Either post it here in the comments and tell me what you're going to do or write to me, terry at terryharden.com. You can tell me what you did. Share some pictures, post some and tag me. I'd love to see what you're doing. I'm staying home. <laughs> I'm going to stay home and I think I'm going to work on this. Let me show you what I will work on before I won't do it Monday, but I think Saturday I'm going to play bingo with my chalk walk team and I'm going to work on this painting that I'm working on. So as you can see, this is phase one. I'm learning how to paint in acrylics. And there is the image of the character and then my version of the character there. And there's lots more to do according to my teacher. So uh, I'll be working on that. And uh, but that's phase one of it. And uh, it's very exciting. And I can't wait to get in and do some more. It's coming along. But there's this is the first part of that painting. In other words, uh, according to this acrylics painting teacher, you build it in layers. So that's actually layer one and a half. I've got the background on it that I like. But now I'm going to pull into, um, um, you paint the background first and you, you do this first like puzzle-like as you see here, the sort of, what is it? Contemporary look of the painting where all the colors are kind of next to each other. Now we're gonna work on pulling that out to be a little more, there's, there's more to it. And I'm documenting every step and I don't know what the impainting will look like. It's all a journey. <laughs> but you try something new and you never know. And you just keep doing it. I wish I could have, you know, painted more faster. But but uh, I've had a lot of work on the Hitchhiking Ghosts. And and I want to get those out to you. So. so I love you guys. Have a wonderful Memorial Day. Hugs and kisses to all of you. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to actually stand for you now and say, uh, whatever you do, be safe, do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Thank you for joining me today. Hugs and kisses. And we will see you soon.